I watched V for Vendetta last night. Carl. Finally. No, I mean I've oh, seen oh, it before. Okay. I I just it's been since I haven't seen it since it came out and years and years, right? I know you watch it every year. Every Most year. of us don't do that. And so I uh watched it last night. Very appropriate time in history to be watching it. And really very a lot of things in the in the movie that are applicable to what we're seeing today. There's the whole storyline about how uh they find out that the, this pandemic that um, affected three different sites and that the pandemic that they used to justify quarantine measures and curfews and stuff was actually um, instigated by the government, which is kind of interesting. Um, I'm not saying that our government released COVID. I'm just saying the, the, our government has used COVID um, in the way they do in that movie yep. to, um, to, to, for creeping authoritarianism, you know, but um, yeah, the part that I think stood out to me most was the part about when you you lose everything. Mm. When you and, and there's a quote that Marie Busky reminded me of that uh, she sent to me before I started watching that movie. But it just it just nicely dovetailed with with that film. And it's an it's a Sultan Eatson quote. And it is. Uh, let me just read this to you for a second because I thought this was really great. You only have power over people as long as you don't take everything away from them. Hmm. But when you've robbed a man of everything, he is no longer in your power. He's free again. Yeah. And I, I was, had reason to think about that because, well, in the film, you see her, everything is taken from her, and she conquers her fear. She loses her fear, or she, she moves past her fear once she realizes that um, that death that, that that there's something beyond death that's something more, more important that death is not the end something more important mm -hmm. and that um, you know whether that is truth I would say it's truth principles yeah if you're if you're believing yeah I would, say I, would, it's God, I would say it's principles that, yeah yeah there are things that are more important than all the things you fear losing and the article I wrote, which is probably really different than yours, was sort of about how even though there's so many things, so they've taken, they're, they're in the process of taking free speech from us and not just through mass purges on the mainstream platforms, but also through um, trying to eliminate any competitor, any competitor or any space where we can go to and have free speech. Mm -hmm. Like, like Parlor, they just took down, it's offline today. Yep. Um, I think that even though there's still, that's just speech, right? And, and there's so much more that, that they have yet to take that they can take, but you can still get to that place of not operating out of fear. You can still get there before all those things are taken. Um, you just have to give up I, those I really, things first. You, yeah, you have to choose to give up to those things or give up their power over that's you. That's what I mean. And yeah. so, yeah. And so I tweeted something like that. And Jack Murphy, who, you know, he wrote the book, um, Democrat to deplorable. He said, you know, I got over my fear about four years ago. And yeah, that's around the time it happened for me too, is once you've been through it once, you know, when I was contemplating, when I, when I was dealing with, with waking up to like what my, what my old belief system really was, what social justice really is and how evil I think it is. And, and, you know, it is a racist, sexist, collectivist belief system. And it is about censorship and control of people. It's authoritarian in nature. It is about violence, supporting violence and, and justifying the uh, means by looking at the ends. Um, and in, in getting over the fear of speaking against it, you know, uh, there was a fear of losing um, my income, my career, my friends, in quotes, my friends, <laughs> but actually some real people I thought of as real friends, sure. friends social circle, status, uh, prestige, uh, you know, an anonymity, um, security, all of these things. I had a fear of all of that. And what happened, and a lot of times people write to me now and they ask, you know, they, they're like, I agree with a lot of what you're saying and I see this, and, and especially liberals are like, I see this on the left, but I, I'm too afraid. And how did you get over your fear? Well, I don't really know the answer to that other than just doing like 
work on yourself and trying to pursue, pursue truth. It was about six months for me. And I will say, I think what happened is that over those six months, I got to the point where I actually became more afraid of the consequences of not speaking, of mm. not speaking truth. I became more afraid of what that was going to do to me and do, and, and, and because social justice was, everything around me was getting worse in the world because of this belief system. I became more afraid of where we were going to end up if people didn't start speaking. And so I became more afraid of that than I did of losing all those things that you think are important. Yep. And so once you've cockered that once, I think it's easier to see it for what it is in other forms later. Not, not always. You're still going to, I still see people. I still have fear. Every, every, of, course, of course, humans have fear. And it's just, it's just a matter of like not letting the fear own you, not giving that fear power over you. And I still see people struggle with that. Even people I would consider um, truth seekers who, who, who will, because once you've lost all those things, and then if you start to build them up again, um, I see people get, uh, uh, for example, in the, in the reactions to the purges, I've seen some people, instead of looking at like, oh my gosh, there's, uh, I lost, like I lost, I think 800 uh, people. I'm down 800 followers on Twitter mm -hmm. as of today. I don't view that. They're not going in there and taking away my followers and, and try, that's not something happening to me. <laughs> right. that, those are people who either chosen to leave and are leaving and are, it's an exodus off of Twitter or it, I think it, it's that plus it's in conjunction with people being disappeared. And Twitter has said they're, they're um, getting rid of accounts that are bots or whatever, right? Oh, yeah, sure. Right. But they're purging people. Those are 800 people who are now gone, either mm -hmm. uh, of their own volition or because Twitter kicked them off the platform. But I've seen some people who have maybe lost everything when they left the social justice left or left the, the woke cult then gain a following and some amount of prestige or um, social status or, or what have you, who are, are now, it's almost like if you let, you start to lay up treasures again and you've already lost them once, there's that temptation of letting them own you again. You don't want to lose them again. And so I've some, seen some people kind of reacting to it in this sort of woe is me way about like, they're trying to take away my followers and they're trying to take away my influence and my, 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 and me, me, me. And it's like, dude, they have power over you because you're, because you put so much value in those things. Again, this, your, whatever it is you're building, your, your, um, whether it's your art, your, your, uh, maybe you have a music career, maybe it's your business, maybe it's a podcast like ours. Um, this podcast is not an ends. This is the means. This is the means to hopefully help people and to, uh, in my case, one of Carter and I have very some. We have some objectives that are the same and some that are different. One of my objectives is to help people understand what social justice ideology is. Um, acquiring a fan base or following is not the ends. That's a means to to reach more people, to help people understand what it is. If you lose sight of what, what the real ends are and you're just focused on my following and my fame and my this and my that, like you, well then now, now, first of all, you've gotten sidetracked. And second of all, you've, you've put, uh, you've made idols out of these meaningless things and it's going to hurt you more. You're fearing this more, I guess I would say you're fearing all this a little bit more because you're like, Oh, this is, Oh, they're destroying my treasures. You know, I don't know if that makes sense. That was what I was trying to write about. No, I think I think it does. I mean, often I do see people that uh, leave one group for another, like leave one comfort zone, um, and maybe they haven't done the full work uh, that you're talking about of kind of letting go emotionally, um, but they end up in another comfort zone very quickly. Um, yeah. surrounded by, you know, um, different things that they're afraid to lose. And I mean, I agree with you, the whole thing, this whole thing for me, I, I mean, when I started doing this podcasting, I had, I mean, I literally had kind of no plan other than, well, 
I want to say what I'm concerned about with Western civilization and speak freely. And, you know, I had been working in Silicon Valley and I wasn't allowed to do that and continue working. So I was mm -hmm. like, well, I guess if I want to speak my mind, that's all I'm going to be allowed to do because I can't, can't do anything else. So um, it, it was never about I want to amass a certain number of Twitter followers. I mean, I'm not on Twitter really too much, but or YouTube followers or whatever. But I think some people, I think some people, it is easy to get caught up in that stuff. And I, I get it. And there is legitimate yeah. concern for it. I mean, if you're trying to reach people oh, and oh, they ban you, that does affect your ability to reach people. I guess all I'm saying is people have to keep sight of the big picture and why you're doing what it is you're doing anyway. Right. And that will, um, if you're doing that, then they will have less power over you. Right. Because you won't be investing, you won't be um, focused in the wrong direction on the wrong things. Right. And and you'll be focused on what's actually meaningful and um, purposeful, and not uh, not on all these um, worldly, uh, temporal things. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah. And and I think a lot of people, um, well. I think I think a lot of times for people, the fear of losing something is often worse than the actual loss. So, like, I'm afraid yeah. of losing our YouTube account or our Twitter account. Like, that's that's a scary thing. Yeah. Um, but I can't let the fear of that be worse than it actually happening. I mean, if it happens, it will suck, and we'll have some. We'll have to deal with some stuff, and and it will be a pain to get back and running in some capacity. Would probably immediately start doing. Um, just uploading content to library at least and would have to figure out another live stream solution and blah, blah, blah. But, um, you know, if we operate constantly every day worried about the fear of being banned from YouTube, then they're, they're, <laughs> they're getting editorial control over what we're doing. They're, they're taxing us while we're yeah. on YouTube. Like, Let's just then do our thing. And if they it. kick us off of YouTube, then yeah. they kick us off of YouTube and we'll deal with it. Yeah. But we can't wasting time being too afraid about it. I mean, look, I do intentionally not say completely outrageous things on YouTube that I know, you know, that probably could be said a little bit more subtly anyway. And these are not necessary. Like there's a little bit of self-censorship, but not yeah. too much because I don't want to worry about it too much with YouTube. Um, yeah.